And that was why I was especially pleased at how the timing of all this worked out, that this would be the week that we might look at the presidency. And my goal was that we would look at the presidency differently than we normally do. We look at these as um, the most public of men, so far only men. What happens when you look at them in private? What is it that presidents need? What is it that only they know about leadership, about the Oval Office, about what that job does to you? These are men who are symbols. They are the leaders of the free world. What happens when we look at them as though they're actually human beings? whose insecurities and obsessions and gifts and talents affect history in some ways every bit as much or more than their politics and policies do. These are the most powerful individuals in the world. So what happens when you look at them in a group? Which we almost never do. What group can a president be part of? Other than a group of other presidents. When we look at them in pairs, they are almost always in opposition. It is Kennedy versus Nixon. It is Reagan versus Carter, Clinton versus Bush. We look at them at war. What are they like at peace? And are they ever? And this is what surprised us most, because of all the ways we look at presidents and see them, we never see them like this, where they're not paying attention to us and they're not alone and it's not about their power, it's about their needs, and about that job and what it does to them, and what it is that binds even remarkably different men of different generations, different ideologies, different political parties and principles together in very unusual ways. That was the story that we set out to tell and have been struck, particularly this year, particularly as we watch this year's campaign unfold, what we're asked over and over again as we've traveled the country the last few months talking about this is, why do they sound so different than the, when they're talking to each other than what we normally hear from our politicians in public? You have the right to call for any service to the country that you need. Herbert Hoover cabled Harry Truman on the night Roosevelt died. Anytime you need me, Mr. President, I'll be there for you. Eisenhower told Johnson on the night of Kennedy's assassination. I am yours to command, Richard Nixon told Ronald Reagan after the 1980 election. We want you to succeed, George Bush told Barack Obama after the 2008 election. All of us who've been in the office, he said, understand that the office transcends the individual.